We are at the end of October, which among other things is known as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And there's good reason to spend at least a month on this topic, if not more, it should be 12 months out of the year. The National Coalition Against Domestic Violence says nearly 20 people a minute are physically abused by an intimate partner. And that one in three women and one in four men have been victims of some form of physical violence by a partner within their lifetime. And intimate partner violence accounts for 15% of all violent crime. Crystal knows what that's like. She had to jump from a moving car to get away from a violent situation. Sherry Kendall is CEO of AVDA, or Aid to Victims of Domestic Abuse. Thank you both for being here this morning. This is a, a good month, a good time to be able to talk about this for a lot of different reasons. Crystal, what was it that led you to AVDA in the first place? We, I mentioned that you had to jump out of a car. You had a six-month-old child in the car when you did that. Obviously, there was some, some, some severe domestic violence going on at that time? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, when you're in a situation like that, you kind of don't know what to do. You're kind of overwhelmed with emotion and scared and frightened. Um, you know, me being a first time young mother, not knowing what to do or who to um, trust was a big thing. Um, but I knew that once I was separated from my toxic relationship, um, I needed to um, talk to somebody and um, more so educate myself on the resources that were available um, to seek the help that I needed. We we're talking earlier, thank goodness for your older sister who gave you a number yes. of AVDA and at that point in time you were able to get in contact with them. Yes, absolutely. Um, she did the legwork for me. I had recently had, um, prior to me, my incident, I had um, called around town to um, seek attorney services and to get in a divorce and they all required an upfront fee of which I did not have at the time. Mm -hmm. So um, luckily my sister was able to um, come across AVDA and um, gave me the number and told me to call. Sherry, this is why you're in existence, isn't it not? And when you get people like Crystal who don't know where to turn, they call you and that's why you've been around. Why has, um, what is AVDA's role and how long have you been at it? Well, we've been in existence at AVDA for 36 years, mm -hmm. and we know one of the biggest problems in our community is a lot of people don't know that we exist even after 36 years. I myself have been involved with AVDA for 14 years and could not be prouder of the work that we do. Um, we, we're in a community that's very rich in resources. There are so many different resources for domestic violence. Uh, legal aid is one of the most important, and it's one of the, the, the least common out there. So we really need to get the word out to, to people like Crystal that we do exist. Do you find that people who may be in a domestic violence situation don't get out because of their not knowing they have resources legally to get out? There are so many different reasons, but that certainly that is one of them. We know, research tells us, at least in the Houston community, that many of these fatalities, these tragic fatalities that we're dealing with on intimate partner violence, the, the victims never reached out for help. And so we believe two things. One is that they did not realize they were in such danger. They didn't know what domestic violence really is, um, but also not being aware of resources to help them. Until, Crystal, until you reached that crescendo point where you had to d dive out of a moving car, what kind of steps had you taken? You had thought about getting out of your relationship, had you not? I did. I did um, know that after I gave birth that this was not the uh, healthy environment for my daughter to be raised in. Um, so shortly after um, coming across AVDA, they prompted me and educated me on um, all the services that they could provide for my daughter and I and filed the appropriate paperwork for protection order for writ um, because at the time, again, I didn't have my daughter in my possession um, and I had to go about it the legal ways um, to get pos regain possession. How surprised were you when they told you that you had representation. I remember we were talking and you said, um, okay, how long is this gonna take? I was very um, surprised because when you think about organizations that provide free service, the first thing that come, came to my mind was a long waiting list. Oh my gosh, how long is this process gonna take? When am I gonna be able to see my daughter? When am I gonna have access to her? How long is the legal process? It's a pretty intimidating process when you, um, anything in the legal field or a field that you're not, an, educated on. Mm -hmm. So it's very intimidating to know that, um, you know, you don't know lack of knowledge of what's out there that could possibly save your life. The challenge for your organization is to be able to give people who come to you with no, they don't know the legal system. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to get through to that. Your, your challenge is to make that 
a painless process for them because they've already going through the pain. Indeed. We help them navigate that, that very confusing legal system. We have a team of very dedicated staff attorneys. At one point, Crystal had said to me that she feared that you get what you pay for. <laughs> uh, at ABDA, that's not the case. We are seven attorneys, absolutely know their stuff. They and, know family law. And how are you funded? I know that I was honored to be a part of a, an event you had not long ago where you had a lot of the law enforcement community and attorneys and so forth there and you were raising money from some of those folks as well. They're donating a lot of their services to the are they not? Indeed, indeed. Home Safe Home is our annual gala. We'll be doing it again next October. We hope that you're with us again next October. I'm going to have to up my fee. Well, that, well we can handle that. Okay, good, good. We, we appreciate from your, zero your to work zero. in this so much. <laughs> uh, but yes, it's that. But also government grants, local foundations. Uh, it really takes the community pulling together to create a service like I don't want to make sure that I mention too that if someone calls you and maybe it's not legal advice that mm -hmm. they need you, you are in a group of folk who really take care of each other as it relates to domestic violence people who call you what do you do in terms of, if you can't help them you give them to somebody else who can indeed again it's a, it's a rich community with resources ABDA does provide trauma counseling we have financial assistance education assistance so we are able to do a lot of things in addition to legal but we have wonderful community partners shelters law enforcement, uh, there's all sorts of folks out there that are ready to help. Well, I want to make sure that people know where you are and what they can do because what you said earlier really strikes a chord with me that a lot of people who were in a violent situation didn't know and people mm -hmm. who were killed never knew the help that they could get. So here's your number, 713-224-9911 to get information about how you can get legal help. You, there's also a hotline number, man 24-7 help in emergencies. It's 800-799-SAFE. That's 800-799-SAFE. Crystal, thank you for sharing your story. Congratulations on what's going on now, that now three-year-old child that you have now. And Sherry, thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Kimbrough. Appreciate you thank coming you. in.